One word from God can change your life forever. Before Jesus did any miracles, what he would always do is teach. And after he taught, he built the people's faith, and then we saw all kinds of miracles happen. The same thing can happen today as you open your ears to hear from God. When God speaks, it's not just any word. It's just not words that are being spoken. It's the same words and the same power that created the heavens and the earth. Just think about it. The earth was without form. It was void and it was empty. It was dark. And then God said, let there be light. And then there was light. One word from God can change a drug addict and make him 100% free. Who the, who the sun says free is free indeed. One word from God can heal cancer. One word from God can raise the dead. One word from God can restore your marriage. One word from God can give you a brand new life. One word from God can give you eternal life. One word can, from God can turn your depression into joy. One word from God can turn your fear and your anxiety and your hopelessness into faith. One word. All we need to do to bring to the table is some faith. And I've been, I've been serving God for a long period of time. And I made up my mind to serve God when I was a little boy. And you say, why did he serve God as a little boy? Because before, before I gave my life to Jesus, I grew up in a home with a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, and a lot of abuse. My father, uh, we lived in, in Puerto Rico, in, in, an, in an island near Puerto Rico, um, the Virgin Islands. And my father on that island was kind of like a prince on the island because he had, they had car dealerships, they had, uh, uh, they had businesses. But behind the scenes, we lived on the beach. We had a hotel on the beach. We had a house on the beach. Everything looked really beautiful on the outside, but you, no one knew the story on the other side of that door. And, and my father um, was a really, he was an educated guy, but on weekends, he was a different man. On weekends, what he would do is go out and drink and party and then commit adultery um, and then come home and accuse my mother of every single thing that he was doing. I remember my dad would come home. He would, he would come in the house and I'd be trembling, so scared, because he would go in the room and then what he would do, he would start beating my mom up and accusing her of committing adultery because he just did it and he thought she was just like him. Once in a while, I'd get the energy or the strength or the faith as a little five, six-year-old boy to go and open the door of that dark hallway as I was hearing my dad beat my mo mother up. And I would I'd just get the strength to walk in and, and I would say, Dad, please stop. And he'd push me aside, kick me out of the room. My mom would try to be as quiet as she could. But by the morning time, my mom had black eyes he put guns to her head. When she was pregnant with me, he'd punch her in the stomach. And I grew up like that. On Monday, Monday through, I would say, through till Thursday, it looked like a normal family until the weekend came around. On Monday morning, my dad would say, I'll never do it again. I'm sorry. But this is the reality. Unless Jesus sets you free, you're a slave to your condition. You can't keep your promises. There's only one person that can set you free from you and set you free from your sin and set you free from your addiction and set you free from who you are. And that's Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can come into your life and make you a brand new person. Well, you have a testimony. All things have passed away and everything has become new. So, but on Mondays, he would cry. I'm sorry. I'll never do it again. I'm so sorry. But we all knew it was until Friday. I remember when my, the day the day my father died. I was a little boy and I love my father. And I want you to understand this. Even if you've messed up and you've been unfaithful to your family, your children still love you. They still look up to you. And I didn't look at my dad as a failure. He was my dad. And I remember he told me, Marco, I'm going to pick you up. And what we're going to do after work, I'm going to pick you up and we're going to go to the movies. Now that was a big thing for me because my dad never spent time with me. And I was so excited. I couldn't wait. I didn't have a sense of time. I was just five, six years old. But I knew he gave me a promise. I'm waiting for him. He was supposed to pick me up at five. 
and they were supposed to spend some time, father and son. That would be the first time ever he spent time with me. I was excited. Five o'clock came around, he wasn't there. Six o'clock came around, he wasn't there. I'm telling mama, oh, mama, when's dad coming? He's coming. She, and she didn't have the heart to break it. I mean, she didn't want to break my heart. She said, well, maybe he's coming. He's, he's just a little late. It was eight o'clock, nine o'clock. She told me, uh, let's just go to my room and we'll just wait for dad in our bedroom. My dad did show up at 12 o'clock midnight and he showed up drunk like usual. And then he started asking for the gun. He goes, where's the gun? Where's the gun? And, and I was in the room with her and she had the gun underneath her pillow because at that time in the Virgin Islands, we're in the little island that we lived on in St. Croix, there was, there was some murders happening on the island. The Rastafarians were murdering t- tourists and we had, a, we had a hotel. So she had a gun to, for protection, but she came for the gun and he goes, give me the gun. I'm gonna go kill somebody. And, and my mom gave him the gun. She goes, watch it that you don't kill yourself. And what happened that night, my dad did his thing. But I want you to understand this. You could do your thing and continue doing your thing, continue doing your thing. But there's a day that's called payday. There's a, there's a scripture that says, uh, um, God should not be mocked. Whatever a man sows, he'll reap. The Bible says also the wage of sin is death. You know what that means? That eventually your life catches up with you. It, just because we're feeling like we're getting away with it, because my dad would go out there, get drunk, crash his cars, and this is what would happen. The police would bring him back home. He never had consequences for anything he did, because on that island, they would just take care of him. He'd just get a brand new car. It didn't matter. It looked like every sin and every consequence he ever did was just erased. And just because you feel like you're getting away with it and you feel no one knows what I'm doing doesn't mean that the price is still not over your head. For sure, there's a price over your head with God. And the Bible says we're resisting the Lord. The wrath of the Lord still stays, stays over us. And there's going to be a day that we breathe our last breath and we're gone. And once we're gone, the only thing that's going to matter is if you gave your life to Jesus or you didn't give your life to Jesus. And I, I, I've given my life to this because I know that Jesus is the only answer. We're not offering religion. We're not offering good behavior. We're not offering a goody two-shoes lifestyle. What we're offering is new life. What we're offering is forgiveness. What we're offering is peace. What we're offering is eternal life. What we're offering is a purpose. So that night, my dad went to the bar and we found out the story. My dad was picking up on some lady at the bar. And he was trying to pick up on some lady, but the problem was her husband was sitting right next to her. So while he was trying to pick up on her, her husband sitting right next to her, the bartender says, Mr. Garcia, we don't want any problems. Can you just please go home? We don't want any problems here. And, and my father, full of pride, said this. It sounds like you're kicking me out. Are you? Because if you are, you're disrespecting me. And if you're disrespecting me, I'm going to come back and kill you. Well, my dad wasn't playing. He went home, went back, called the bartender out. My dad's drunk. The bartender isn't. He just got out of the military, the bartender. They got in a shootout in front of that bar. And that night, at 32 years old, my father got a bullet between the eyes. And he died on the gutter on the streets. I now didn't have a father. But my mom made, made her mind up. My mom never took me to church because he would never allow her to go to church. This is what happened to my mother. She married my father and she was a Christian. And all her family told her, please don't marry him. He's a non-believer. And you know what she says? I'll change him. But the truth is, she wasn't going to change him. He was going to destroy her. The night of their honeymoon, he threw her through a window. And he abused her for seven years straight. Seven years straight until that night. She couldn't get away because she says, if you, if you walk away, if you run away from me, I'll find you and I'll kill you. And the island was very small. She had no way, to, no way of escape. So my father died. My father died. She, 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 she got me right away. We came to California. We left the Virgin Islands. She took me to church for the first time in my life. 
For seven years, my mother couldn't go to church because he told her, you'll never step into a church again. She was a teacher, and what she did was she, she asked the pastor, she goes, can I please do the Bible study and the Sunday school class with the kids? I want to teach my little boy the Bible. That first service, that first Sunday school class, she presented the gospel to me. It was the first time I heard that Jesus Christ died for my sins. This is the first time I heard that if I believed in him, he would forgive me of every one of my sins. This is the first time I heard that he would give me eternal life. And when she, when she asked for an opportunity, who wanted to give their life to Jesus? I gave my life to Jesus at six years old. I said, I want to give my life to Jesus. But I'm going to tell you this. So at six years old, you gave your life to Jesus. At six years old, I gave my life to Jesus. I'll tell you why. Because I knew I was a sinner. Because you're, see, the, your sin doesn't just affect, your bad decisions don't just affect you. They affect your children. They affect the next generation. Either you're passing on an inheritance that's godly, an inheritance of victory, an inheritance of serving God, an inheritance, or you're going to pass on an inheritance of addiction. You're going to pass on an inheritance of lust. You're going to pass on an inheritance of violence. That's what was passed on to me. At six years old, the spirit of lust was so strong on me. That I was looking at girls sexually already at six. You could not trust your little girl with me at six years old. Because I was already thinking sexually. Those demons were already passed on to me. So at six years old, I wasn't a little innocent six-year-old. I was, a, I, I was a, a demonized already at six years old. I needed salvation. I knew I was a sinner. I gave my life to Jesus. And at six years old, I was born again. I was saved. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And from that Sunday on, I'm going to say this. I wasn't planning to talk about this. But, but this is a testimony that I believe we need to hear today because there's somebody here that God's changing the whole sermon because he's out to reach you today. And God is saying, today's your day of salvation. Today's your day of a new beginning. Today's your day. Come on, what you're looking for, you're not going to find in the drinking. You're not going to find in the girls. You're not going to find in the cocaine. You're not going to find in just one more round with the devil. Stop accepting the lie just one more day. That one more day you might not ever have again. I'm, I'm, this is all I'm saying is God is after someone today. He loves you so much that he's brought you in this place, changed the sermon, brought me all the way from California because he's saying, don't be, don't be like Pastor Marco's father that died in the gutter and is probably in hell. He got an opportunity, but he resisted. He resisted the gospel. He resisted the gospel. And what happened? He died in a gutter. And I, but when he died, I went to the site where he died. And, and he, he, some of the blood that was on, that he was bleeding, he had enough time still, even after he got hit, to write, you know, to write a heart on the, on, on the wall. I don't know what he was trying to say. I love you. Maybe he remembered that he had an appointment with me and he broke it. I don't know what happened in those last few moments. But I gave my life to Jesus. And when I gave my life to Jesus, my mom made a deal. She took me to church every single Sunday. I didn't have a father, but I, got a, I had a mother that made a decision that she was going to train me and bring me to church. She wasn't just going to do that. She was going to start showing me the Bible and teaching me the Word. Uh, every day, we'd have a Bible study. She'd teach me the Word. And then I, she started telling me, you're not just like every other boy. You've been, you, you're called. You have a call on, on your life. I'm training you. You're a leader. You're a pastor. You have a call on your life. And she kept telling me that. So if, when I was six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, if you were to ask me, what are you going to be? i said, well, I want to be a baseball player. But my mom says, I'm going to be a pastor. Come on, let's give God some praise because God has a plan for your life. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So we began, she began to teach me. We began that Bible studies in the home. At 12 years old, I remember being in the church. And our church was a very small church. And our Sunday, we didn't have a Sunday school teacher. Uh, and, and, and so my mom goes to the pastor and she says, I know you guys don't have a Sunday school teacher to teach the kids, but my son, he's 12, he knows the word. 
So why don't you let him teach the kids? Somehow the pastor said, okay. <laughs> then they have no options. So at 12 years old, because she began to teach me the word, I would take all the little kids and begin to tell them what I've learned. This is, what, this is how you grow. This is how you grow. It's simple. What you do is first, you hear the word of God. Someone say, hear the word of God. You hear the word of God. The second thing you do is obey the word of God. And the third thing you do is that you teach the word of God. And if you do that, you'll continue to grow. But today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. And God did not come for perfect people, but he came for sinners like you and me. I want to read a scripture and I'm going to, because, because I went into that testimony, I just want to read this scripture and I want to get to the point. Today is someone's day of salvation. Today is someone's day to be set free. What an amazing service that you would hear this testimony of my son-in-law and how God saved his life. And then all of a sudden, God changes this sermon, and now he's, re he's, he's after one soul. You see, I want you to understand this. If one person gives their life to Jesus, it was a worthwhile trip for me to come all the way from California just for you. God loves you. We love you. There's a scripture in Romans 10, 13. In the Amplified, it says, For whoever, I love that. You can just stop right there. That's everybody. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. You know what I love this? It includes everybody. It's inclusive. You might be in this room and say, man, you don't know me. I'm a lot like Gabriel. I made a lot of bad decisions. I feel like a failure. I feel like I keep falling and I'm not, and I, I, and I keep getting up and falling. I feel like, I, I feel like everything I'm touching is being destroyed. I feel like I, I, I don't fit in. And God is saying, I came for you. Jesus did not come for the righteous, but he came for some sinners. The people that know they're sinners. If you know you're a sinner, you qualify. Come on. It's just like if you just got an accident, you qualify for an ambulance. If you're a sinner, come on, and you know you've messed up, you qualify for a savior. He loves you. He didn't come to judge you. He came to save you. He came to set you free. He gave, came to give you eternal life. And how do you come to Jesus? You just come the way you are. Whoever you are, come the way you are. God does the changing. God does the saving. It says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord in prayer will be saved. You know what that means? It means you'll be delivered from the power of sin because sin has power over you. Jesus said, whatever you give yourself to, you become a slave of. See, sin doesn't announce, hey, if you, if you try me out, I got chains and I'm going to hold you and you will not be able to get out and I will destroy your life. I'll destroy your mind. I'll destroy your family. I'll destroy your honor. I'll destroy your dreams. It doesn't tell you none of that. It just tells you it's going to have some fun tonight. But some of us, you're in this room, but you've been struggling. But God is saying, today's the day to finally surrender and be totally be saved. Be delivered from the power of sin. Be delivered from the misery of sin. The reason I say be delivered from the misery of sin, because sin is fun for a minute, but and then it comes with high prices. It comes with depression. It comes with anxiety. It comes with torment. It comes with demons. And you might say, you might be even in this room. I don't know if I believe in all that demon stuff. You, see, I understand this. The fact that you're saying you don't know if you believe in that demon stuff is proof that a demon is talking to you. Hey, I, I don't exist. I don't exist. I, I remember casting out a demon out of somebody. And, and I said, in the name of Jesus, come out. And the demon says, I'm already out. <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? I'm already out. Demons think we're dumb. I'll tell you why they think we're dumb. Because century after century, we keep falling for the same old dumb tricks. I'm going to be the one that's going to get away with it. Yeah, that's why the prisons are full. Those drugs won't affect me. I control drugs. Yeah. 
right? I can sleep wherever I want, but yet still have this wonderful life. You're not. Because those things lead to death and they lead to misery. So sin has bondage attached to it and sin has misery attached to it. But I got good news for you. That Jesus came to set you free from the bondage of sin. Jesus came to set you free from the misery of sin, from the depression of sin, from the anxiety of sin, from the craziness of sin, from the mental illness of sin, hallelujah, from the sickness of sin, from the disease of sin. Right? But he also came to set us free from the judgment of sin. And we got to think about that. Now, I want you to think for a second. One day you'll die, just like my father. I remember, I remember I, I led a man to the Lord when I was working in a car business. I was in a car business for 14 years. I led him to the Lord. And his mother was passing away in a hospital in the same city. And he told me she's in a coma. And I know if she dies right now, she'll be lost forever. She's going to hell. She's always rejected Jesus. She's never accepted him as her Lord and Savior. I know. Can you please just go to the hospital? I know she's in a coma, but at least give her an opportunity. And I remember going to the hospital. And when I got to the hospital, she's in a coma. It looks like it's all over. I just pray to go, God, just give her one opportunity to at least understand what I'm saying. A miracle happened in that moment. She came out of the coma. She couldn't talk yet, but she came out of the coma. And I go, squeeze my hand if you can understand what I'm saying. She squeezed my hand. And through that little time that I had with her, I led her to the Lord. She was, she was minutes away from going into eternity without Jesus Christ. And I understand this. If you die without Christ, you die in your sin. Jesus did not create hell for you. He created heaven for you. Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. But God doesn't just want you to be with him there. He wants you to be with him here. I've never had a regret living for Jesus. Living for Jesus. Come on, young people. Living for Jesus is the greatest thing you'll ever do. You'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. I love serving God. I got five girls that serve God. And I got five, five girls. I thought I was going to have a boy, but girls kept coming. <laughs> now I got a son-in-law. That was, and I got two boys from him. So those are my boys. All I'm saying, come on. God has a better plan than for your life than you could ever imagine. If you'll just trust him, give your life to him today. You'll be saved. Let's all stand up in both rooms. Let's all stand up in both rooms. This is a moment of truth. The Bible says to come to Jesus like a little child. He didn't say to come to Jesus as a grown, adult, stubborn, hardhead. The reason I say that, because little children, if I talk to them about Jesus, they're born believers and they believe. And, and, and for them, it's easier to say yes. But there's someone in this room that God brought me all the way from California to share this testimony because God loves you. And he wants to save you. And he wants to make you whole. And he wants to give you the gift of eternal life. And tomorrow is not guaranteed. You have this moment. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. I've seen people leave our services and it happens, happens more often than not because we have thousands of people that come to our services every single week. But I remember a, a man that, that hesitated giving his life to Jesus and, and, and he, his family brought him and, and God was giving him one more shot and he left. He didn't give his life to Jesus. This is what he was saying. I want to get high one more time. But this is what happened. After he left the service, he got high one more time. But that one more time he got high, within two hours of leaving the service, he overdosed and died. He went into eternity. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. I've seen people leave our services. I, I, remember, uh, I remember this girl when I was in high school. She had a crush on me. And, and I'm not bragging about I had, the girl had a crush on me, so relax. <laughs> and and she, it, was, it was her birthday. And she said, well, you just go out with me for my birthday. 
And I told her, I'll, yeah, I'll go out with you, but we're going to church. A Christian concert. It was a Christian concert. We'll go to church. We'll go to a Christian concert. She goes, okay. Her mom, her parents just bought, him, bought her a Porsche for her birthday. So we, we're, we're going to this Porsche to this event. There was a time like this to give her, her life to Jesus. You know what she did? She goes, nah, I'm not quite ready. God was reaching her. You know what she did? She, she dropped me off of my house. She took off. Within an hour period of time after leaving me, she got in a head-on collision. She didn't die, but she got in a coma and became a vegetable. And she's still in a convalescent home to this day. This, I said, Pastor, are you trying to scare me? No, sometimes the scariest thing is your reality. Because people are dying every single day, every single minute. And they're going into eternity. And there, there is a God that created the heavens and the earth. And Jesus Christ really did come. It's history. We're in 20, 2,024 years since Jesus Christ came. He really did come and he's coming back again. And, and this, this church right here is a last day church that's going to reach souls. This church, understand that if you're in this atmosphere, you're part of what God is ready to do. We are, this, we're bringing in the greatest heart. Churches like this are few and far between. But this is a church that's, that's preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. It's bringing people to Jesus, setting them free so they can have eternal life. And not only have eternal life, they can start living this life now, the abundance in life. This is your time. There's some of you here that I'm going to ask you a question. If today were your last day on earth, in the overflow here, do you know where you'd spend eternity? Now, you, you might be saying, Pastor, I think I do. I think I'd go to heaven. I, and I say, why? Well, I think I'd go to heaven because I'm a pretty good person. I think I'm going, but this is the idea. I want you to understand this. No one's going to heaven because they're a good person, because we're all sinners. That's like, that's like someone that just committed armed robbery and shot someone, they go before the judge and they say, hey, um, a guilty or innocent? I, well, I'm innocent compared to like, I've done a lot more good than bad. This is my first robbery. <laughs> he just said, no, 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 no. You're not here for the good you've done. You're here for the crimes you've committed. So when we stand before God, we're not going to be standing before God. We're going to stand before God forgiven or we're going to stand before God guilty. And I got good news for you. There's nothing that you could do to make yourself unguilty. The only one that can forgive you, the only one that can cleanse you, the only one that can save you, the only one is Jesus Christ because he died. He paid the price for our sins. Or maybe you're a Christian and you backslidden. If you backslid, don't act like you didn't leave. It's time to come back. And how do you think you're going to get back on fire when you made a you made a deal with the devil to go back into the world. You're going to have to renounce that and come back. And I'm going to understand this. God's not here to judge you. He's here to save you. He's here to restore you. He's here to forgive you. He's not here to tell you, I told you so. He says, son, daughter, I've been waiting for you. I brought my son all the way from California for you. Or you're another person, pastor, I know I'm not right, but I want to be saved. I don't want to be forgiven. I'll tell you this. It takes a real man or woman to give their lives to Jesus. You come the way you are. God's the one that's going to set you free. God's going to give you new desires. He's going to fill you with his spirit. He's going to fill you with his joy and his peace. He's going to give you purpose for, for your life. And the cycle of destruction is going to break today in the name of Jesus. Not only for you, but for your children. So when I count to three, you're saying, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus or I want to recommit my life to Jesus. I'm not even asking anybody in the overflow here or online to close your eyes. I'll tell you why. Because I've learned this. If you're embarrassed to live for God here, you're going to be embarrassed to live for God out there. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This is the greatest decision you'll ever make in your life. Give your life to Jesus. Your heart's pounding because God is saying, I'm, I'm, I love you. I want a relationship with you. And everything that you're looking for is in Him. One. When I say three, I want you to raise your hands all over this building. Say, I want to recommit my life to the Lord. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be saved. Come the way you are. He loves you. He'll do it if you're just willing. Two, when I say three, raise your hands all over this place. I want to give my life to you. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this place. I want to recommit. Proud of you, young man. Proud of you, young lady. Keep your hands up. Proud of you. Come on. Proud. Way in the back. 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 In the overflow. Way in the back. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand. Now. 
Everyone that raised their hands, I'm going to let you guys know this. We love you. There's going to be one consistent thing in your life is going to be this church. We ain't going nowhere. Until Jesus Christ comes back, we won't be here. And we're going to love you.